Uh, the word that has come to us this morning through our brother Zado is just a word on time. A word on time. And uh, may the Lord bless him and may the Lord bless us all. So mine is just to put a stamp at what he has said. Amen? Welcome, Huri. Kili abacho amitufudisha asubu hiya leo. Kwa utukufu wa mungu wetu. Amen? And so, uh, I just want to continue with where he has left, and uh, my our message this morning is about knowing the truth. Praise the Lord, Amen. knowing the Amen. the truth, because God has been teaching us. He has been teaching us and proclaiming the word to us and helping us to understand that it's only the truth that will help us. Many times we have, we have been put in various other altars, but when we know the truth, then it is well with us. Amen? Amen. When we know what? Amen. The truth, it shall be well with us. Those other altars, they will not have power over our lives. Amen? So that has been really teaching us, and I want to thank God for the way he ended the topic last Sunday by even praying for us, and declaring liberty unto every one of us and may the Lord bless us and even as we embrace those teachings and as we move in that faith to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And so we are going to read from the book of John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And from verse 31. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Your word is alive, your word is faith, it is, is effective. Your word never changes. We appreciate you and we magnify you even as we break this word again. Even this morning, to the glory and to the honor of your name, we pray that God you may increase in our midst, even as we decrease to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, John chapter 8, uh, from verse 31. And the Bible says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. This is Jesus who was speaking. And as you all know, wherever Jesus went, he did good all the time. He ministered life. He ministered hope. He did things that were to glorify his father. And so here he is. He has been walking with his disciples from one state to another, one uh, town to another, one village to another. He has been on a journey, a journey of doing good wherever he was going. And he has walked with his disciples all through. And now here he is talking to them. It is a time of now of speaking to those of his own. As much as he has been working with them, he has been ministering to the others out there. Ministering hope unto them. But here he comes to a time now, he wants to speak to his own. Those that he has been working with from town to town. Time after time. And he says to them, Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Meaning, as much as I call you my disciples, as much as you are not to be my own, there is a duty that you're supposed to do on your own. And this is abiding in my word. Remaining in my word. And Zadok has told us this morning that the word has the ability. 
And we need that word. Praise the Lord. Amen. The word of God is the one that ministers the grace. The word of God is the one that ministers unto us. So Jesus is saying, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And he continues to say that too. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth that we have been told by Zadok, the truth. Anything can be, there can be a truth. But there is the truth that originates from the word of God. There is the truth that can only be found in the word of God. There is the truth that can only be manifested when you get deeper into the word of God. So Jesus is saying that if you abide in my word, you will be my disciples indeed. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Many times we depend upon the men and the women of God to pray for us deliverance. But I want to tell us this morning that as much as men and women of God will pray and declare deliverance unto us until we get deeper, then we are still not yet free. Praise the Lord. The freedom that we could get through prayers from the men of God may be just but temporary. But when we get deeper into the word of God, we will dig into the truth and the truth that will set us free. The truth that will help us to walk in liberty. The truth that will help us even to walk with confidence even when situations do not allow us to walk. Praise the Lord. Amen. Even when circumstances dictate that we need to come down. They dictate that there is no hope. When we know the truth, it will set us free and we will be able to walk with confidence in all situations at all times. Praise the Lord. Amen. And verse 33 says, They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. You know, they have their own reasonings. They have been told that what is expected of them by Jesus. But here they are responding with what they know, what they have believed all along, what has been put unto them, that as much as you are telling us, what we know is that we are Abraham's descendants, and we have never been in more bondage to anyone. You know, they are confessing themselves. Hatujai kuwa mateka kwa jia yoyote. Sizi ni watoto ama kizazi cha Abrahamu. Na kwa hivyo they are telling themselves with all the confidence that kwa sababu sisi ni uzawa Ibrahimu, sisi tukwa sawa. And many a times we fall a play when we depend on uh, the lineage that we come from. And unfortunately, even today, many people say that I'm born again, but when you ask them, why did you get born again? They can only tell you, there is a real Why? Because they are born and they found themselves in the lineage or in a family that believes in God. Na kwa sababu walikuwa katika haya mazigala wamekuwa all allowed but najua ya kwa there is something to pray there is reading the word there is saying I'm so and so and I'm born again to them being born again is like an inheritance they have received from their parents and these people are likewise the same they are same with the confidence that we are Abraham's descendants so in this case, as much as we know, we are well, 
we are okay. We don't understand the kind of freedom you are telling us about. Because we are already free. So they are telling Jesus, how can you say you will be made free? Jesus, what do you mean? What do you want to tell us? What is this message about? That we will be made free? We are already free. We have no problem. We have never been uh, uh, at any body, bondage. All through, it has been well with us. And brethren, this is what is killing even the church today. That as much as the word is being preached unto us, as much as the word is coming clearly unto us, we confess ourselves and tell ourselves that word is not mine. It belongs to the others. Me, I am well. I am okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. We pass the message to another and sometimes we even tell ourselves, I wish so and so was here. That message would have fallen very well on that person because it is Relate to this person. Me, I am free. I am okay. This is what the Jews were telling Jesus. For us, what we know is we are Abraham's descendants. We have never at any one time been in bondage. So what is this that you are telling us? That we shall be made free. And so Jesus answers them, verse 34, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So Jesus takes the time to explain to them, to make them understand what is this freedom that I'm talking about. It is true, you could have been experiencing a lot of easiness, a lot of freedom, a lot of great good things. It is true, you could have been experiencing that. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a personal freedom that comes from within. Praise the Lord. Jesus is trying to help them understand that the freedom I'm talking about, it is more personal. It is not based on where you come from. It is not based on what you have always believed in as a family. It is personal. And here it comes to a time where, where I normally tell people, matters of faith, they are first of all personal. Praise the Lord. Matters to do with faith. Before we say that in our family background, we are Christians, the matters of faith are first of all personal. You as an individual, what do you believe in? Do you profess Jesus Christ in your life? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it just a matter of we believe in Christianity? Our family, we were brought up in this and this setup. Praise the Lord. Brethren, when it comes to matter of being free and free indeed, we must look at ourselves individually. Cross take our own beings and ask ourselves, where do I belong? Who do I believe in? As much as in our family, as much as in our society, this is the norm. But I as an individual, where do I belong? Praise the Lord. Because if there is anything that is making the church not to be effective, it is the fact of believing in that our family our society, our village, 
our tell, this is what we believe in. But what about I as an individual? So Jesus is talking to the Jews here. And he's telling them that, actually he's talking to them that believed in him, not everybody, but those that say we believe in you. So he's talking to them and telling them that if you as an individual, if you personally abide in my word, then you will be my disciples indeed. You will have gone an extra level beyond what you have been there before. You will have been elevated to another level as an individual if you only abide in my word. So this morning, my message to myself and to us is that we have no other option but to abide in the word of the Lord. If you want to live a freedom life, if you want to live a life that is free of every other manner of bondage, there is no other option. Hakuna chia ikine Ila ni kuka na kudumu kwa neno la mungu Maana neno la mungu ni uhai Neno la mungu ni la ukweli na ni la uzima Halibadi ni kikamwe The word of God Psalms 19.89 tells me That the word of God is settled in heaven Praise the Lord. Amen. The word is settled. Hai badiliki. Hai badiliki. And again also the word tells me that the entrance of the word of God bleeds light. When the word of God enters into our lives, it brings light. The entrance itself, it gives light into our lives. Praise the Lord. Meaning without that word, we are in some darkness somewhere. We are in some bondage somewhere. Without the word of God. Praise the Lord. It's so unfortunate that today we Christians, we are yet yes Christians, but we don't embrace the word of God. Many times we read the word only on Sunday when we come to church. But these other days, we give ourselves excuses. And we say, I'm so tired. I've been busy the whole day. You left your house as early as maybe 6, 7 in the morning or even 5. And you're coming back late in the evening. And when you arrive back to the house, it's the business of the house doing a few things here and there. By the time you are through, you say, I'm so tired. You just want to sleep. And sometimes even pray, you just say that grace. Oh, may the grace be enough for me. And I go and sleep. It's so unfortunate that this is the threat that we have put ourselves into. I say we have put ourselves into because we can create time for God if we want. Praise the Lord. As much as we are busy, as much as there are so many demands in our lives and in our society, in our times, there are many demands that call for our attention. But regardless of our fees, we have no option but to create time for the Word of God. Because the Word of God is the Word that will make us free. Praise the Lord. The real freedom, the real freedom will only be experienced when we embrace this word of the Lord. So Jesus is speaking to his own. Jesus is speaking to his own. And he's telling them, he's talking them one on one now. It's like he's preaching to, with them. And he's telling them, yes, I know you are mine. I know you believe in me, but I have one thing that I want to tell you. I have one thing 
that I want you to understand that if you abide in my word, then for sure you will be my disciples indeed. And when you become my disciples indeed, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do we want freedom? In our families, at our place of work, do we want freedom? Praise the Lord. Freedom will be found in no other place but in the Word of God. This Word that can never be diluted, this Word that can never change, this Word that is from everlasting to everlasting is the Word that will give us freedom. The Word that is the truth and the truth alone. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is responding to these Jews and telling them yes, that yes, I have heard you. Yes, you have told me very well that you are Abraham's descendants. That is okay and that is good. You are Abraham's descendants. I have no quarrel with that. I have no problem with that. I too know you are Abraham's descendants. And being Abraham's descendants, then it means you have a right to inherit some of the things that Abraham did. And if anything, I know what, what God said that he will bless Abraham and his descendants. And so because you're Abraham's descendants, then for sure you are blessed. Jesus is acknowledging that for sure, yes, you are Abraham's descendants. But, he said them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. But a son abides forever. In other words, all I want about you is you becoming sons and sons indeed. Because when you become sons, then you have you will have the right even to get deeper into the house. Unlike a slave who does not have a right into the house. But when you become disciples indeed, you will be like a little son who has a right to entrance into the house. And so he's telling them that as much as you are Abraham's descendants, one thing is wanting. One thing is still needful. You abiding in the word. And so my word and my question to myself and to us this morning is, how often do we embrace this word? How often do we read this word of God? Do we take time to get deeper into the word of God? Or do we just wait until what we are taught here and that is what we work with? Do we create time for this word of God? The word of God is alive. Praise the Lord. The word of God never changes. It is effective and whenever the word is spoken, it bears fruits as it ought to. Praise the Lord. So it is only by us embracing this word that we will walk in total liberty, in total freedom. As much as that dead man will continue reaching out to us and pray for us, praying and declaring deliverance unto us. We will get into deliverance, yes, it is true, but if we don't abide in one, we will go back again to where we came from. Unaweza ukatoa mtoto kwa matope, akienda kucheza kwa matope, lakini kwa sababu bado hajajua matope ni bae. After some minutes, 
utapata amerudi pale tu anachezea ile matoko kweli wongo praise the lord mtoto akiona matope na maji anafurahia anaenda kukanyanga kanyanga anaona ni kitu mzuri anaona inafaa maana ni mtoto na wewe kwa maana ni mzazi unaelewa ya kwamba inamchafua inaweza kuwa na uchafikine baya unaenda unatoa huyo mtoto pale kwa matope na unamwambia usirudi hapo hiyo ni baya but the moment you get out and you go maybe into a house somewhere that the child does not see you anarudi pale pale tu kwa matope kwa sababu kwake iko sawa haoni anything wrong with matope there is nothing wrong if anything it is fine it is okay and the children are doing it praise the lord and that splashing of the water it is fun to them because they don't know the dangers or the problem with such waters it is the same way brethren if we don't know the truth tutaombewa tupate deliverance na tutatolewa ni kweli tutatoka but after some time we will go back to where we were delivered from praise the lord tutarudi pale pale tu kwa sababu hatujui ya kwamba pale tulitolewa ni pabaya to us it is okay ni ile mazigara tulikuwa tukijua hata hatuelewi ni kwa nini mchungaji anaona ni baya it is quite in order it is well we have grown in that scenario all through our years we have seen even our elders wengine wako makazi mazuri and they have come from that mazigara so there is nothing wrong praise the lord Amen. we get contented with our mazigara and so this is the same case with these Jews they were contented with what they were and so they are telling Jesus himself we are Abraham's descendants so there is nothing wrong we don't need any other freedom so they are asking him how can you say you will be free in, you will be made free how can you say this Jesus we are free praise the lord they are questioning Jesus what do you mean and it's the same way even today Christians are questioning and they are asking what do these servants of God mean this is what we have grown knowing all along how comes now it is becoming and that it is bad it is wrong this is the trend that is moving in the society how can they say it is not right praise the lord because we have grown and found ourselves in those scenarios we have embraced them the way they are we have let them because we have seen others growing into other levels in the same as Igara. So to us, there is nothing wrong. We have seen others being blessed. Alafu kibarikiwa wanaenda kuitisha maombi kwa wengine. Ambao wanasikia wasijui wanamwagilia damu na nini. Wameenda kuitisha baraka huko. Na kwa kweli maana wameenda, tunaona wanaendelea mzuri. So there is nothing wrong. What is pastor telling us about these things? Praise the Lord. We start questioning, we start doubting. And to us it is normal, it is okay. So we are not exceptional. We are just like these Jews who are talking to Jesus and telling Jesus. All we know is that we are Abraham's seed. We have been free all through. What do you want to tell us? What are you telling us now that we will be made free? we thought we are free but i want to repeat the word of jesus he is telling them that if you abide in my word if you abide in my word you will be my disciples indeed and then you will know the truth and the truth will make you free it is only the truth through the word of god that will make us free brethren amen praise the lord amen it is not about how much 
learned we go out there how much research we have done and known about various parts in various fields researches are good but the truth remains that the word of god is the truth and the truth alone praise the lord Amen. researches will continue every season every generation they will do their researches and they will come up with their facts that this is happening like this because of ABCD. Praise the Lord. Researches of all different categories of things. Even somebody was telling me that another time they were doing research about salt. They were trying to find out how calves salt, as little as it is, it is that strong that ukiweka katebe kamoja tu katuvi kwa maji you will feel the difference of the taste so they are trying to do that research and find out how comes that salt is this powerful praise the lord kadogo tu kako enough to make a difference what am i saying that researches will move and will continue in every generation one research after the other we do those researches. There is only one fact and one truth that the word of God is the one that will make us free and free indeed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. However strong, however mighty, however great, there is nothing else but the word of God. So Jesus is saying If you abide in my word. Abiding is remaining. It means si usome leo na ukae na hiyo neno useme this is the word that I know. Yaani inakuwa it is the only song in the, the for the rest of your life. Ah. Uh-uh. Abiding is remaining. Remaining in that word. Yaani ni unasoma na unasoma na unasoma. You don't get tired of reading and abiding in this word. You don't get tired. Because again, the word of God tells me that this word is new every morning, every day. The word of God is new. Hakuna wakati neno la Mungu linazeeka. Hata kama ilikudumia jana, leo kisoma tena, it will still minister to you a new thing. Amen. The word is new every day. And we are also told that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So as much as we are busy looking for the bread of the day because much of the business that we have in our day life is looking for bread. Kwa sababu uh so in the poor we are learning after looking for money ways of survival ways of living so you want to do something extra kidogo so that at least you can get an extra penny to make you move on so as much as we are busy looking for ways and means to meet our to meet our needs then we have no option also but to abide in the word every day of our lives. As you eat that bread that, that makes the body stronger and better and healthier, eat the word also that makes your spirit stronger and greater. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't just make the body strong, yet your spirit is very weak. You need the strength of the spirit too. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because when spiritually you are strong, then you are able to move on in every situation without worry, without any anxiety of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to repeat this word to us this morning and tell us that let us abide in the world. Let us be like the Berean church. 
that after they left the church, they went and sat down again together to dig deeper and get to understand what is this that we were being told. And I want to thank God for our brother Daniel who has been doing the work of recording. And after that, sending the, that message to us again. So we have no option or we have no excuse to say that at least you can get the message through the YouTube. And you can revisit it again and try to internalize it slowly now when you are seated somewhere in your house. You try to internalize what is this word that you are being preached to. Get it better and better. Make it part and parcel of your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have no excuse. Brethren. And if we are not free, then we will not blame anyone but ourselves. We can only blame ourselves if we are not free indeed. Because we have been taught the word. The word has been released unto us even through other portfolios that we can be able to get them and get them better. And dig deeper. Try to go through that word again. Internalize it. Tunaineza kwa udani. Tunaitafuna, tunaitafuna. Na tunaineza, tunaifanya ikuwe sehemu yetu ya kwamba tumejua hilo neno. The word, the word of God. Praise the Lord. Because the word will never change. It will never and never change. Fashions will change. Systems will change. Circumstances will change. Times will change. Everything else will change. Generations will change. Praise the Lord. Everything else will change with time. But the word of God, it will never and never change. Praise the Lord. So brethren, this morning, my word to us is, let's embrace the word. Let's create time for the word. Let's find time for the word. Ukipenda kitu, una sacrifice. If you love me as I'm telling, when I tell you I have something, ata kama unikuwa na kibia wapi, you will sacrifice that time just to come and be with me. Amen? Ata kama unikuwa uko na appointment iko town, kwa wana nimekwambia niko na something I need your attention. You will create that time. You will sacrifice what you are to do for my sake. You will come and be part and parcel of me. So you have sacrificed what else you are doing for the sake of my ten. Praise the Lord. How I pray that we can sacrifice part of our 24 hour time. Because each of us has 24 hours in a day. How I pray that we can sacrifice part of that 24 hours for the sake of reading the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Neno litatueka hudu. Neno linauzima. Neno halibadiliki. Neno la mungu ni la kwele. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hili neno linauzima. Na limetuambia ya kwamba tukilijua, tukilipata, tutakuwa huru na huru kabisa. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Neno la mungu. Brethren, let's create time. Let's embrace the word of God in season and out of season. When things are good and when things are not good, we embrace the word of God. Praise the Lord. When the day has been busy and when the day has not been busy, we create time for the word of God. Because the word of God is God himself. Praise the Lord. 
That is my worst message to us this morning. That the truth in the world is what will make us free. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help you and me to be part and parcel of the church that embraces the word of God. I know we are in that season and that time and that generation whereby everything is our fingertips through the internet. So sometimes we lie to ourselves by saying, me I spend most of my time listening to the preachers preaching. Yes, it is good. You spend time listening to the preachers as you are doing your work, you are still listening to the preachers. But how good it will be if you go back and try to read for yourself that word that they were preaching so that you may get it better. Because it's not all preachings that are in the internet that are good. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's not all the preachings. You must also be careful. Who are you listening to? Praise the Lord. Amen. You must be careful. Who am I listening to? And after you listen, you also go back to the same word. You try to read it again and get to understand it in a better way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what I'm saying is, as much as we are reading the word, uh, by listening, uh, as we are listening to the word through various other preachers, let's create time for our own to have time for God. By reading the word of God personally. We make it our personal decision, our personal initiative that I tell myself every day, at least 20 minutes, if not too many, 20 minutes I will give to my God. Just to read the word and meditate on it. Because again, Joshua was told, that is Joshua, uh, let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua was told uh, to meditate on the word of God. Day and night. This is Joshua chapter 1, I think verse 8. Yes, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The Bible says, and it is written, it is there, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Praise the Lord. Meaning, this person has digested that word and has become part of him. And now, even anything that he speaks, he speaks the word of God. Praise the Lord. So Joshua was being told, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Praise the Lord. That this book of the law, this word of God, will not depart from you as you are leading the children of Israel, as you are leading my people, as you are moving from time to time with these people. The only thing that will help you is that you don't allow this book of the law to depart from your mouth. Make it part and parcel of your meal. Praise the Lord. As you are eating other meals, make the word of God to be part and parcel of your meals. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let it not depart out of your mouth, but meditate there ring day and night. So, niambia usiku kwa melala, how do you meditate? Huh? Daytime, at least unaweza kukaa hivi umetulia, unawaza hivi neno. Na usiku, how do you meditate? Do you know how to meditate at night? Praise the Lord. That's a message that needs to be taught to us. Meditating day and night. Meaning even when you are asleep, if there is anything that is circulating in your systems, it is the word of God. Praise the Lord. As you are breathing in and out at night, 
Everything around you is just but the word of God that is circulating. Praise the Lord. If there is anything like a dream, you are dreaming anything to do with the word of God. Meditating day and night. So Joshua was told, meditate on it day and night. And when you do that, then he's told that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written there. Read. So as you meditate on it, then be king. Observe and do that which is written there. Read. Do it. Whatever is written. And then he stood. After you do all that, for then thou shalt make. Can somebody read for me? For then thou shalt make. Say it. Uh -huh. And then. And then. Do we want success? Do we want to be prosperous? There is no option. Meditating on the word of God. Day and night. Making it part and parcel of our lives. As we eat, as we walk, as we, as, we, as, as we sleep, as we do anything. Make the word of God to be part and parcel of your life. And when you do that, then your way will be prosperous. And you will have good success. Not just success. Okay? But good success. We have many successes. But there is that good success that comes and originates from the word of God. So this morning, brethren, as a wife, I want to repeat those words of Jesus to us. In John 8, that says that if you abide in my word, then you shall be my disciples. Indeed. And then you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. May the Lord help us to abide in the word. May the Lord help us to embrace this word in our every moment of life. Embrace the word. Speak the word. Eat the word. Walk the word. Drink the word. Sing the word. Praise the Lord. Whatever you do, do the word. And then it will be well with us. Amen? Amen? May the Lord help us to be a people that embrace the word. And then we shall be free to the glory and to the honor of God. Father, we thank you. And Father, we bless you once again. We are so grateful for this morning. We thank you because of your word. Your word indeed is settled in heaven, but it does not change. Your word indeed, when it enters into our lives, it brings light. Therefore, we thank you because of your word. And this morning, our Father, as your children, as your saints, as your sons and daughters, O oh God, we are praying that you help us by the Spirit of God to be a people that seek more of abiding in your word. To be a people that are after walking the word of God. Doing the word of God. Everything we do is about the word. God help us. We surrender to you this morning. We surrender to the spirit of God. May you God have your way through in our lives. As we start off this journey of abiding in your word. Lord we thank you. And Lord, we bless you because you are precious and because you are faithful. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and the Lord do you.